Naturally, in all of our other tutorials, we've taught you how to ride forward. But in today's video, we're gonna teach you how to ride backwards. Whether you're looking to learn a new skill or just show off in front of your friends, we've got you covered. Welcome back to Joy of Bike. I'm Mike, and in today's video, I'm joined again by Chase Willie. Together, we've broken this skill down into three simple and straightforward steps to help you learn, practice, and master the fakie. Before we dive into this tutorial, would you guys mind doing us a solid? If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Maybe you're new around here. We're stoked you're here. Now, if we earn it throughout the video, we'd really appreciate if you liked the video before it's over. That makes sure other people just like you can see it as well. If you have feedback or questions, definitely let us know down in the comment section below. We love hearing from you and look forward to hearing what you think of this video. To get started with this skill, we're gonna need a bike with some flat pedals on it, a helmet, a parking lot with a curb, ledge, or wall, and eventually a bank or a quarter pipe. Let's quickly cover a few common misconceptions we often see beginners associate with this skill. The first misconception being having our weight too far forward. Next up is gonna be pedaling too fast when we're going backwards. And lastly, relying on the rear brake while going backwards or exiting the fakie. Now that we've gotten the misconceptions out of the way, let's talk about what you are gonna learn in this video. Part one, the rollback. Part two, the pivot. And part three, the practice. And just like our video on how to air out of quarter pipes, I'm learning this skill right alongside all of you. Luckily, Mike is unbelievably good at fakies, so I hope you stay tuned until the end of this video because he's gonna share some pro tips with us. So we're back at our bike dojo, the parking lot, because we believe that this is the best place to learn new bike skills and almost anyone should have access to it. Let's start by finding a curb, a ledge, or a wall with plenty of space around it. We're gonna use this to initiate our backwards roll with a nose press, so it doesn't really matter what you choose as long as you're comfortable with it. Once you've identified that curb or wall, Ride up to it slowly and at a perpendicular angle and gently press your front wheel into it. Now think of this action like you're trying to catch an egg. In order to catch that egg without breaking it, we want to absorb its impact as soon as it makes contact with our hands. Similarly, we don't want to just run into the wall here. We want to absorb that impact with our front wheel as soon as it makes contact with the wall. We do this by slightly shifting our weight back as we approach the wall and letting our body weight gently shift forward as our bike's momentum is stopped. We can also aid in this absorption by letting our back wheel come off of the ground a little bit. This might take some practice in itself, but in the long run, it'll help you generate more backwards momentum and speed. Not only are we absorbing our momentum by doing this, we are also priming ourselves to redirect that momentum. Press your energy into that front wheel and the wall and you'll feel yourself spring backwards. This is how we're gonna start practicing the rollback. Now a quick note here, we don't wanna get caught up in our cassette as our momentum shifts, so be sure to time that first backwards pedal stroke as you spring backwards. Just like anything, practice is what's gonna make this start to feel good, but here are a few things that you can keep in mind as you're starting to figure it out. Stay in a neutral riding position with almost all of your weight on your feet. Riding too far forward and on your handlebars will make the front wheel feel too wobbly, and riding too far back won't give you enough leverage or room to stay balanced over the bike. Keeping your weight somewhere between your bottom bracket and rear axle will be the sweet spot. Keep your hips centered over the bike because moving them from side to side is what's gonna make you start to turn. This is super helpful in the fakie, but it's a little bit more advanced, so stay tuned and we'll get to that in the next section. Play around with a few attempts to learn the cadence of your cassette. By this, I mean identify the point at which your cassette engages, and the goal here is to stay just in front of it with your own pedal cadence. As we begin to feel confident traveling backward, we need to start thinking about turning around to redirect our momentum to go forward. To start this process, let's figure out which way we turn. As a general rule of thumb, we want to turn towards our back foot. Since I'm right foot forward, I'm going to turn to my left. To begin this redirect, we're going to start by offsetting our weight by putting our hips on the opposite side of our turn. 
Since I'm right foot forward, I'm going to put my weight on the right side of the bike, which will start our turn to the left. Pay close attention in this example. All we're doing is changing the way the weight is distributed. Right now, the weight is all central on the bike. When I slightly change it to the right, look what happens to the handlebars. They turn right for us, which is gonna help us initiate that left turn. And although it might seem confusing that the handlebars are turning right to help us go left, the reason that this is happening is because we're going backwards. So I guess what I'm saying is you need to go right to go left and vice versa. Oh, right, that makes perfect sense. Turn right to go left, yes! Thank you! Now that we've initiated our turn through a slight weight shift, the next thing that we're gonna wanna focus on is utilizing pedal pressure or leverage to finish off that turn to redirect our momentum to go forward. To do this around 90 degrees in our turn, we want to aim to have our pedals parallel to the ground with our dominant foot forward. To capitalize on this pedal position and get the most amount of leverage, we're gonna drive energy through that front foot while we're looking with our head and shoulders in our desired direction of travel. A good reminder here, where you're looking is generally where you're gonna end up. As you're practicing the exit of your fakies, check in with yourself along the way, make sure you're looking all the way through it with your head and your shoulders, you're driving energy through that pedal and you're fully following through. As we pivot, we don't want to push or pull on the handlebars. We want our hands to just serve as anchors there. We want our arms to be slightly bent and active as we allow the bike to redirect. Successfully pivoting out of the fakie and redirecting our momentum forward may happen after a few tries or after a few sessions. To be honest, it's different for everybody. Take your time and remember the simple steps we've covered to get here. You've got this. As we become more proficient at riding backward, there are a few things that we can do to level up our fakies to incorporate them into lines, ramps, or tricks. A great way to manage speed while faking is through pedal pressure. This is something that can be really tricky to figure out, but once you do, it's an ultimate game changer. To apply pedal pressure, we're going to put energy back into the pedals as we're pedaling backwards, as opposed to staying just ahead of the cassette. This really helps us as we're incorporating fakies into lines so we can really figure out the speed that we need to be at before we get to where we're going. Pivoting out of fakies gets the job done, but as we start incorporating them into lines or going faster, it's not always the most effective way to redirect our momentum. If you love earning some extra style points as you're finishing up your line, well, you're gonna love exiting your fakie with a slider. To execute a slider at that 90 degree turn as we're coming out of our fakie and applying pedal pressure with our dominant foot, we're also gonna turn our handlebars in the direction of our turn and allow our tire to slide around as we're exiting that fakie. Now, in my opinion, one of the most fun ways to exit a fakie is the half cab, and it looks great too. To start practicing the half cab, we really wanna be pretty comfortable with already being able to bunny hop 180 because the motion we're gonna be doing is exactly that, just going backwards. The half cab can be similar to a pivot in the way that we're gonna turn with our hips. As we initiate that turn, we're gonna load up with our dominant foot forward, bunny hop, and make our turn with our shoulders and head. This skill probably requires a full in-depth video, so if that's something you'd like to see, let us know down below. As you start to fake the further distances, steering becomes a very crucial piece to success. To steer our bike when we're faking, what we wanna do is basically offset our weight in the direction that we wish to travel. If we wanna turn left, we're gonna offset our weight a little bit to the left. And the same thing if we want to go right. As we navigate backwards, we can use our peripheral vision and intermittent checks to look over our shoulder to make sure that we're not going to run into anything. Careful here, as we lean side to side or look over our shoulder, we might need to counter those actions to make sure we continue going in the direction we wish to travel. Speaking of navigating, you can cruise over to today's video sponsor, Traction Coffee site and save 30% on your first coffee order. You can take advantage of this offer by hitting the link in the video description down below or waiting to scan the QR code here in just a few moments. In your world, fun is the currency of effort. Enjoy pure, all-natural fuel to keep you moving forward, no matter the task. For the doers, the fun-havers, the all-around go-getters, fuel your fun with Traction Coffee. 
So you're starting to get the hang of the fakie and you understand how to get out of them. But what if you want to start really flexing this skill? We can start making some distance goals to challenge ourselves. Either pick some lines on the ground or count how many backwards pedal strokes you can fakie for. The point is giving ourselves the opportunity to practice going farther and farther. Talking about going farther and farther, this is a place where we want to start being cognizant of our surroundings because if we're not, we can run into things. When I was first learning how to fakie and getting pretty proficient at it, I would fakie down the street by the house I grew up in. One day I was riding down the street with my buddy and I start doing a fakie and I bet you I was every bit of 150 feet into this fakie when my back tire came in contact with a Ford Ranger. And <laughs> essentially what happened was my back tire wedged underneath the bumper and the pavement it flipped me into the back of the truck and before i knew it i'm sitting in the bed of this ford ranger wondering what's going on as my tire made contact with this truck my buddy yells truck <laughs> like i didn't know that i was you know hitting the truck i could have completely avoided that if i would have just gone to a parking lot or somewhere that was big and open and practiced this skill and became more aware of my surroundings and how to look around so I could avoid hitting something like a parked truck. Oh my God, that's crazy. We should also start getting comfortable doing the fakie on some obstacles in the skate park, like a bank or a quarter pipe. The fundamentals are the same here, although you can forget about doing the nose press since gravity will assist in redirecting your momentum. As we start to dial the fakie in a little bit more, now's the time for us to start looking at learning 180s. We can do this on flat ground with a bunny hop or identify a ramp or a fly out to practice this on as well. This is a great way to learn a new trick and incorporate something like the fakie that you just learned and put those two things together for a really cool outcome. If you want to see a full video on how to bunny hop 180 or how to fly out 180, let us know down in the comments below. Dude, it is so hot out here today. This literally says it's 96 degrees. It is heating up. So I guess that means it's time for the joy ride. And that's that. Fakies are such a fun and approachable skill and we are stoked to help you learn them. If there are any other BMX skills that you'd like to learn or if you have questions on this one, let us know down below. If you enjoyed this video, as always, cruise down and hit that like button. It helps other people just like you see it and learn how to fakie as well. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Thank you guys so much for riding with us. Have so much fun riding backwards. We'll catch you on the next one. Later. And before we go, we would love to see you guys on our other tutorials, how to bunny hop and how to air out. Thanks as always for being here. We look forward to seeing you on the next joyride. Oh my goodness. Whoa, how do I stop now? <laughs>